So far in the letterpress project, we've built the frame, the roller mechanism, and the drivetrain. Now it's time to figure out the last critical piece, the rocker mechanism. By the end of this episode, we should be able to follow a piece of paper through an entire printing cycle. Hi, I'm Ryan, and welcome back to the shop. The rocker mechanism is made up of a few main pieces. The rocker body, the cross pieces, and the platen. The first order of business is to start on the rocker body. This is made from a piece of 1x3 steel bar. Ahead of time, I've pre-machined it to length. First, I need to bore a number of holes at each end. Two of these will provide a location for the rocker to rotate around, and one will be used for a pin that will interface with the cam later on. There's only one problem. I don't really have a good way to hold this piece in the milling machine. So here's what I did. Yeah, that's quite a bit better. Now I can bore those with an annular cutter, a recent purchase of mine that's slowly becoming a staple in my shop. But the annular cutter leaves these little cores in the middle of the hole if your hole doesn't go all the way through the material. Luckily, these are pretty easy to remove. Now I'll cut the slots for the cross pieces. And lastly, I'll drill and tap a bunch of holes all over the part. And now the tapping. Finally, let's add all the hardware. These pins fit into the part and they're locked down with set screws. And after all that, the rocker body is now complete. Next up, let's work on the cross pieces. These are made from some 1x1 steel bar. The main feature on this part is a long slot. This long slot will provide a place for the bolt to slide. Tightening the bolt will lock down the piece. At each end, we also need a hole for some spacers. Each of these holes needs to be tapped with some fine threads. They'll provide some adjustability in the mechanism later on. Okay, that's all for the cross pieces. I'll attach them to the rocker body. Now the spacers. I need four of these pieces, and they'll adjust up and down inside of the threaded holes to make a minute adjustment to the platen's position. I'll start by turning the shoulder that'll interface with the cross pieces. I'll also drill a hole down the middle. To index into the platen, I'll form a step on the reverse side. I'll mill a hex shape on the exposed end so I can easily turn these with a wrench. Now, this is what they're supposed to look like, but they didn't all come out this way. This was my first time using a hex collet block, and the collet didn't hold onto the turn shaft as well as I had hoped. Oh well. Finally, I'll form the matching threads on the shaft using a 5 8 inch die.
Now I can add the four spacers into the assembly. The last piece in the rocker assembly is called the platen. This is where the paper goes. To start with, my platen is 11.5 inches by 6 inches. That's not all that tall, and this press should be able to handle platen up to at least 7 inches, possibly 8 inches. But to be honest, there was a deal on 12 by 6 steel plate. I'll upgrade eventually. First, I'll mount the plate to the mill. Now, I'll mark the location of each hole. As I'm drilling, I'm being very careful to stop a hundred thousandths before the bottom of the plate. I really don't want to damage the top work surface. I'll bore some partial depth holes to index the spacer pieces into, again using the annular cutter. And finally, I'll tap the hole with threads. Here's the idea. The platen fits on top of the spacers. To adjust the position of the platen, any pair of spacers can be adjusted to slightly change its angle. To lock it down once it's in position, a 3 8 inch bolt goes lengthwise through the spacer into the platen. Now that the rocker mechanism is finished, let's get it into the press. But wait a second. Before we can do that, we need to cut one more feature, a slot. I'll explain momentarily why this slot is going to be critically important to the rocker's motion. In order to cut this slot, I need to take off the side plate. To figure out where the slot should go, I made a little scribing pointer. I'll install it into the rocker and scribe a line. The center line of the slot should follow the scribed mark. To cut the slot, I'll mount the side frame into my rotary table. Though the side frame is solidly attached, I'm still a bit scared to cut this all in one go. So I'll do it gradually. I'll begin by drilling a few holes along the path. Now I'll carve the path with a quarter inch end mill. And a half inch end mill. And finally, a 3 quarter inch end mill. Here's a close up of the slot. Now I can stick the rocker body in between the two side frames. Let me walk you through a full printing cycle. First, the rocker starts in the up position, and some printing stock is loaded. As the press begins to close, the rocker quickly tips inside. Once the platen faces the bed, an impression is made. Then, as the press reopens, the platen rotates back up, ready for another piece of paper. Now, I'm currently actuating the platen by hand. To tie this mechanism into the press, there's one more piece needed, a cam. This piece sits behind the large gear that I made in the last episode. As the large gear spins, a small pin follows the cam's profile, and this is what causes the rocker to tip. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the foam version I made of this part when I was building the letterpress prototype. Here's it installed. The motion is a little bit loose, but I think it gets the point across. Unfortunately, I ran out of time and didn't get a chance to make the cam in this episode. I'm planning on making it during the holidays, and I'll let you know how it went in the next episode. So that's it for now. What do you think of the rocker? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. See you later.